picture, I would love to see it as a T-shirt. And a second later, a bot came up and made it into a shirt. So it just like negates that fucking NFT. <laughs> <sighs> Well, are we all tested out, Shim? Yeah, no, we're tested. We're actually recording. Yeah, so I want to take this moment to welcome everyone to a special uncaged episode of Caging Greatness. So one of our normal episodes at this rate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Nick Cage episode. The Nick Cage podcast where the Nick Cage episodes are the special episodes. <laughs> but, I mean, with us doing it, they're all special episodes. I mean, yeah. It's more special because it's like a special occasion when we finally get around to watching them. <laughs> It's like, right. you will not dare knock out my entire catalog. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the rush, people? Why are we going to burn through this material? Like, where's the Where's fire? the cage stuff? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, okay? Hey, we the do- cage ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and also, yep. we do what we want. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> Just, uh, we, we would like to remind you this is a free podcast. <laughs> yeah, none of you fuckers have bought any merch lately at tpublic.com slash user slash Cajun Greatness. <laughs> so well, I don't want to hear shit. Well, obviously, the reason why they're not buying it is because you haven't been plugging it as much. Well, I mean, I, I put commercials in several episodes. Yeah, but you have to say it, too. You can't just let the commercial do all the legwork. Look, just because I didn't say... Buy our merch at tpublic.com slash user slash Cajun Greatness doesn't mean that people are forgetting to buy our merch at tpublic.com slash user slash Cajun Greatness. So what the, what the audience doesn't realize is that we have uh, engineered a Pavlovian response <laughs> that every time they you say that, that triggers a, a thought in their head like, maybe I should get that. Either that or they just drool constantly. <laughs> it's one or the other. I feel like it's Pavlovian and they just changed to a different, better podcast. <laughs> I wonder what Nerdist is doing. I just flip over. But anyway, welcome to this special episode. Uh, we spun the wheel what feels like three years ago. Yeah, it was <laughs> probably about, a, what, a month ago? Oh, it was longer than yeah, that, we, I think. We, we, we sort of, oh, like, four scheduled this one. Yeah, like, fucking <laughs> time is fake. But appointments uh, are real. Yeah, that, unfortunately. And today we are, uh, we're discussing... Uh, something that, that Jonathan had us watch, and he's going to sort of take the lead on this because I'm filled to the brim with visceral hatred. So, <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, Yeah, please. leave it to Shimmy to just fucking, like, <laughs> say how much he hates it even before we start recording. Well, well, that, well, that, well that is very uh, Shim. He'll just sort of give an unprompted, unsolicited, negative opinion on something. That's not accurate. Uh, nah. We had the receipts and receipts of the show. <laughs> It's never unprompted or unsolicited. Ah, ah. But Jonathan, what are we? What, what did we do today? So I chose for us to watch, and now I'm kind of wondering if I pro- if I should have done it at all. It's 1973's The Holy Mountain by Holy Holly Diver. You can see his stripes, but you know he's clean. <laughs> oh, don't you see? Okay, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, Why not? I, 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 I hear the uh, the Apple Podcast uh, security drones beating on our door. <laughs> so, yeah, the Holy Mountain. Uh, I, I don't know where to begin with this this movie. We'll begin where the inspiration came as to why this was your pick for this particular episode. And then you go around and ask us our rating. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was between... Or do whatever the fuck you want. How about yeah, that? Like it's, it's yeah, it's your episode. Have fun. Do whatever. <laughs> well, what, what sort of gave me the idea was, you, you know, the first movie I picked when it was my turn to pick was uh, Hot Rod. Yes. The Andy Samberg movie. And that movie is... Not good, but I really fucking enjoy it. Uh, so that's one end of the spectrum. I'm into some weird ass fucking art movies too. So I was like, I was between this and another movie, and the other movie I know Pat has seen, and I think Justin has seen. So I was like, all right, we'll I'll introduce something that's fresh to everybody. This and <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, yes. what was the other one? Uh, Mulholland Drive. Oh, yeah. No, I've seen that. Okay. So, um... I dig that movie. Really? Yeah. No, I like Mulholland Drive. Now, that is surprising. That, that is honestly, like, one well, of my favorite movies. I'm a sucker for noir in general. Oh, And it's yeah. very noir, even if it is, like, sort of a mind fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I still so, haven't knocked that one off the list, either. It's not yeah. a bad one. I wanted yeah. to. 
Um, because How's I, I was for unsolicited hatred. Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I like my ratings are usually higher than yours. <laughs> Fuck all of you. That is true. And uh, yeah, but like a like a movie that's on that has done nothing to you makes you just uh, at a moment's notice. For instance, the other night we were waiting on dynamite, and um, I may have said this before. I love Man of Steel. It's my favorite Superman <laughs> no. movie, and I will not fucking apologize for it. We, we already have a Batman discourse <laughs> episode on the wheel. Do we, do we need to add Superman to? We're literally at the end of this film. I mean, and we're not even watching it. We're waiting on wrestling to start. Like, and then you would have thought fucking. Somebody just shit in Justin's mouth, okay? <laughs> they did. It was Zack Snyder several times. Oh, God. Point being, unsolicited, you were bitching right before wrestling started about a movie that we weren't even watching. <laughs> well, you were watching and choosing to be angry about it. <laughs> and the thing is... Jimmy, it's just a movie. It can't hurt you. It did hurt me quite a bit. Thank you. And, and the thing is, I, I am not a fan of God, Zack Jason Momoa wasn't even in it. I don't understand. <laughs> All right, no, fine. If it's going to be a shit on Justin party, let's go ahead and get out of the way now. I mean, it could be if you want. I was actually I surprised. Really this <laughs> isn't our review of Holy Mountain. It's actually the roast of Justin. There's a camera, ah! the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, because my self-esteem isn't low enough. Oh. Wah, wah. So, yeah, I, I first saw this movie probably like three or four years ago. because... <laughs> The reputation of this movie precedes it being just but the fuck insane. And I forgot how m much of this movie I didn't remember. Oh, man. <laughs> because I was in such shock watching it the first time. Like, by the time we got to the dude with the tiger tits <sighs> shooting milk out, <laughs> my brain had was fried. But I was like, you know what? I enjoy this. So, uh, but what did what did you give it? <laughs> the thing is, is oh. on this time, I'm like, it is either a ten or a like half star, <laughs> and I don't know because I there. It's one of those things where I'm like, I can completely understand why people fucking hate this movie. But it's something about it just, like, clicks in my stupid brain. But enough about me. I'm going to go around the room, get everyone else's reaction, starting with Pat, who's most likely to be on my side. Uh, th this is the... Technically, was it the, this is the third Yodorowsky movie we watched. Yeah, because we watched El Topo at the beginning of the year and then Santa Sangre right after that. Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, I do think it is a nice little bookend that El Topo was the first movie I watched this year and Holy Mountain is now the hundredth movie I've seen this year. Oh, so I have completed my hundred movie challenge. Although uh, I am still far from done. There's still plenty more movies to be watched this year. Yes. Um, I do, it's a nice little bit of synchronicity there. Um, I do. I will say I, I did have a very different like experience from, from from watching Santa Sangre and El Topo versus Holy Mountain. Not to say I disliked it. I do feel there's a lot of really like striking imagery that I really loved. There's a lot of just like interesting little concepts. I loved how it could be like really just opaque with what it wants to say and interpretive and sometimes it's just like literally telling you what their point is. Um so I did appreciate him kind of running that gamut there. I think to me, for me, the biggest weakness of the, of the film is that it's kind of just runs a little too long. Like if they just made yeah. it like 90 minutes or like an hour, I feel like it would have had the same impact. But I do kind of feel like it was running out of steam as it was going on. And, and I totally get that because I... I We'll get into it when we talk about it later, but I think the latter half of the movie is weaker than the first half. Yeah. And it is kind of just all over the place. Uh, but I will say, um, I think I'm sitting in a three and a half. Like, all right. there's definitely some stuff I kind of feel like, oh, that's kind of like so-so. But like, I think there's some genuine stuff in there that I did appreciate, you know, and that's going to be very different as you will find out. But, um... Yeah, three and a half. I think it's, you know, solid. All right, Cannon. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I could feel the hatred from here. Uh, boy, did I try. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not too long ago, we watched the documentary on this uh, fella. Uh, well, how do you say his name again? Hodorowski. Hodorowski. Okay. And the, the documentary being like the sort of exploration of what happened to his version of Dune. Yeah, it was, it, the title of the documentary is called Hodorowsky's yeah. Dune. It was like a, a little uh, peek behind the curtain on how this guy's brain operates. Uh, I know after watching that documentary, I remember telling Pat and Jonathan that I had interest in watching El Topo. Yeah. Uh, which was before this, correct? It was the movie right before this. Yeah. Okay, and I will say El Topo is very different from this one. It's it there, it's, it's a little it's, more semblance of a narrative. Yeah, it's it is similar, of course, by the same guys. So it's going to be like some wiggly yeah. wobbly, but like it is more constrained. Uh, as much as I appreciate how a balls to the wall uh, he went in this film. And how did I know he was going to be in it, too? <laughs> he, he features well, well, I think they, they showed clips from the movie in the documentary. I, I didn't remember seeing him in it, to, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't remember the scene with the golden turd in the documentary? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because <laughs> the thing is, is like if you, you have not seen this movie and you try to descri- hear someone describe it, you sound like a crazy person. Oh, it, it, I will say, was it, this was a Blu-ray, correct? Yes. It's yeah. like fully restored and whatnot. Uh, I will say there were some really cool, interesting and intriguing shots. The frog battle was kind of interesting to me. That had me <laughs> chuckling for a hot second. <laughs> However, I'm going to say this definitely wasn't for me per se, We'll definitely get into why. Uh, I'm just going to give it a star. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin. Round, round us off, Shem. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> oh, no. We, we kind of already know, but just give I, us a I little... did happen to see a little peek, Ski Mazel. It was half a star. It was pretentious horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hated every second of this. It made me physically angry. <laughs> I've never seen a movie that could be so intentionally obtuse while also being problematically obvious and self-indulgent at the same goddamn time. I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> so the nicest thing I can say is that for a movie from 1973, this Blu-ray restoration looked pristine. It looked lovely. So yeah. kudos to the technical engineers that, <laughs> that sat through this slog of bullshit quote unquote cinema to make it look pretty there were also one or two moments where I thought the music was okay I felt the music was kind of sparse in certain places yeah, like yeah. there were one or two times where there were like a song was playing was like, oh, that's a pretty fun little beat that's a fun little tune yeah but everything else I hated <laughs> I hated it so goddamn much <laughs> This has ruined my day. <laughs> like I like I said before the show, after it was over, I'm like, I am so sorry for making y'all sit through this. I mean, because I like I remember this movie being batshit insane, but I do not remember it being this batshit. You, you definitely become more aware of the movie's strengths or weaknesses. When you show it to someone else. Yeah, versus like, because I, I was just watching it by myself the first time. Well, that's because like, I, I feel like this is something that always comes up when we have like a, you know, choice episode. Mm-hmm. You, you show a movie that you're particularly fond of, but you have no goddamn idea if anyone else would be receptive to it. It's like, a gamble. Yeah. It, it is, is always fair. a fucking like, gamble. I thought when we were watching Guyver's like, this must be the most boring horseshit <laughs> these fellows have ever watched. Uh, and they, they were fairly receptive to it, I from what that, I recall. Yeah. No. Well, no. I, I didn't expect Showdown in Little Tokyo to be the one that everyone enjoyed most of the Lundgren films. You know what? Same. Yeah, like, <laughs> and that was the one that was added last minute. Too. Yeah, yeah. 
it's it somehow had slipped my mind before. So, oh God, I got to show him Showdown Little Tokyo. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Back to hating everything <laughs> untoward. Uh, this oh. movie, I hate it. I can't. Ex- I would rather watch the fanatic twice in a row than ever watch any frame of this bullshit ever again. Oh, I did that. Wow. <laughs> well, not in a row. D- d- I mean, back to ba- fucking back. <laughs> I would rather watch <laughs> Left Behind again, oh, which we okay. were going to have to do. So. I've seen Left Behind. No, <laughs> that movie's. I mean, we're going to have to watch that one eventually. Yeah. That is on the docket regardless it of is, what happens. I, I do wonder what the circumstances would be where we would plan that. Like, what's going to be like the thinking behind it? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I know Ken Logan said he wants to join us for that one. He's also going to be joining us for Vampire's Kiss yes. next week. Hell yeah. So it should be a good time. I, I, I have a question. Okay. What, what, what brought um, this director on your radar in the first place? Okay, so I, like, I, I, I started getting some more like experimental art cinema. And, you know, you get like your David Lynch's and whatnot. And this guy came up a lot, spe- uh, especially uh, when I was looking into the Midnight movie. Uh, movement in the mid to late seventies, because this guy basically started that with with El Topo, mm-hmm. and uh, it was this. He only made like probably one other film before this, uh, and they he started putting it in the uh, distributing it to the Elgin Theater in New York, and it was this like kind of art cinema. Yeah, uh, this is where. A racer head, uh, pink flamingos, movies like that got their start. Uh, El Topo, uh, you know, like after word of mouth goes around, does really well. Yeah. So much so that fucking John Lennon and Yoko Ono were like, you know what? This guy. <laughs> so uh, John Lennon, I think he bought like the like final cut of the movie like the actual print yeah uh took it out of the theater and then you know and he was going to distribute it to like a mainstream audience and then obviously it didn't do well because i because this man is criminally insane uh hudorowski or john lennon <laughs> yes uh, both <laughs> yes yes i had to clarify <laughs> uh trick question <laughs> And actually, all the Beatles really loved El Topo. So John Lennon got on the throne with his manager and was like, all right, whatever this guy does next, you're going to fund it. So the Beatles bankrolled uh, Holy Mountain? Basically. And really? Yeah. That, that's why, it, one, it looks as good as it does and how just elaborate the sets are. Was because you know you have the fucking Beatles behind you. I will say, like, I feel like the the set work and sort of the prop mechanics. I feel like even if you weren't like <laughs> engaged by the plot, um, I feel like that is what plot that is something you, you could probably like lean on as like the uh, a technical strength of it. Because I do feel like one of the best shots and one of the best sets I think is like when the thief slash Christ character goes up into the tower and he sees like this rainbow tunnel. Oh yeah. At the I feel like that's a very striking scene in and, and like just like the general scale of the sets is really just sort of Yeah. One impressive and two, it really sort of like adds to like the the uncomfortable nature of it because you just see like these giant enclosures, like you kind of feel like you're <laughs> even though you're looking down it is like you're trapped in it as well or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or or like the, the shots where it does a little <clears throat> spinny thing. And, and apparently they, they like that's a technical term in the business the spinning, the spinning. spinning. <laughs> you know what I mean uh, I was I remember seeing that just thinking that was the coolest fucking shit ever uh. but uh, so Beatles more or less bankroll the Holy Mountain and originally George Harrison was supposed to be the main character okay you, you want to know why he didn't take the part what he took objection to what was the one thing he oh. said no, no ma'am out of everything in this movie? Out of everything in this movie. Oh. Did he read the script? Yeah. That's what he, that's what he there, wanted. There, there was one thing in particular. Uh, mm, the monkey. Or 
ape. Too much monkey. Not enough ape. <laughs> <laughs> Not like enough George chimpanzee. George Harrison was like, it, I'm putting this in my contract. I want this fucking monkey look, in every look, fucking scene. You have our money. You're going to put that goddamn ape <laughs> in every scene or I fucking walk. Look, Sprightly and Chim Chim are very important to this movie's plot. <laughs> Look, if you if you were to take this movie, you take the lady and you take the ape just in the rowboat and have the movie be their misadventures, I'm here all day for that. <laughs> <laughs> just skip the rest of the shit. Yeah, so you give th- me the weird sets and the ape and the lady and I'm down. Yeah, cuz uh, we call yeah. that the uh, the shimmy cut. It's like the road cut. <laughs> The Holy Mountain, the Shimmy Cut. It'll be five minutes, and it'll have... (laughs) Release the Shimmy Cut. It'll have the Benny Hill theme behind it, and that's it. But yeah, the the, the single thing, the single thing he just would not do, he would not let Hodorowski wash his ass. That was the deal breaker. That was the deal breaker. (laughs) Couldn't even get a stunt ass? I mean... Well, well... the thing is, is like Hodorowski later was like, I should have just given in and just put a stunt person there. But he was, he was just like my vision. Oh, you mean he was a pretentious asshat? I mean, oh yeah. My, I guess I was close. My guess was going to be uh, that part where the dude literally like put his finger in a dude's bum. Yeah, that happened. I, I don't think that would have been. I would have been somebody else's bum. <laughs> <laughs> what what is like this? It's like what if we had an interactive art exhibit, but there's just like ass everywhere, and he's like, like "Hey, look, you get touch the boobs, finger the ass." Like everything is naked in this movie. Yep, I, I forgot how many everything. Fucking, I forgot how many fucking dicks and tits were in this movie. I'm like, did my brain just? fry that hard watching it the and first look, time. Like, I'm going to say something like, controversial. Okay? <laughs> I love boobs. I do. Whoa. I do. Take it easy. <laughs> I still hate this movie. <laughs> that many boobs, not enough, not enough to sway me at all. <laughs> well, this is also like the 70s, so like the, the, nudity, the nudity isn't flattering either. And plus, like, I'm sure that's by design as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, art. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. No, no, no. Just, uh, let's just go. Uh, start at the beginning. Fuck it. And, and I will say, like, before we get into major discussions, we're going to have to play Cannon's favorite game, Guess Who's Problematic. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, the thing is, is, like, I like Hodorowski's movies. I do not like him as a person. Yeah. And, and that Dune documentary made me loathe him. Yeah. Mostly because, like, it's like, okay, like, I get how people could see these movies as pretentious, but there's still enough that speaks to me where I'm like, okay, yeah, I see that how, you know. You, you, you see some method to the madness. You, you, uh, yeah. Like, there's some, like, cromulent point to be made. But... He he's just, he's actually the like he's just playing himself in this movie, yeah. Uh, if you couldn't <laughs> fucking tell, and, and I was just like, I I respect your work, sir. I would not want to spend any time with him because no. didn't you, 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 I mean, we were speaking privately about the lead up to the watching this that the producer that was assigned by John Lennon to to sort of oversee the film, like they had just like a very tempestuous relationship over the course of the film. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> needless to say, they had a falling out. Um, it's like, what? You want a fucking hippo? What the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need you to go to the New York Zoo and lend out every single animal yeah. for individual shots. But m- most of the worst stuff, or the most of the stuff that he's problematic for was the stuff that was done with El Topo, which that movie was, let's just say, not ethically made. Uh, and, and like, during, like, the promotion, he said he, uh... He, he said he raped one of the actresses, like, like on camera, like, on in the shot. And later, he was like, yo, that was kind of mega fucked, and that actually didn't happen, and, like... We don't know where the woman who was playing in that movie is, so we can't know. Uh, I mean, at this point, I mean, I guess I believe him because he he also said he raped Frank Herbert in the documentary. So he's very fond, uncomfortably so, with that word. Like, just very, like, charged language. And, like, yeah, 
that's kind of like his like part and parcel as like this like provocateur like making these intentionally upsetting images yeah. and like I would say there's a time and a place for like and in, 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 uh, intentionally unseating your audience. Yeah, but of course, like there is a, a there's a right way and a wrong way to do that. It, it, like, yeah. like, so like I, I would say probably one of the points that with uh, off kilters of people is like they're in one of the hallucinogenic sequences. There's like a dog fight. Yeah, yeah, like I was like I forgot about that. I do not remember that. I was like, I was like I hope that's fake. Or um, there's, uh, what was it, um, like, underage nudity. Like, there's a lot of, like, yeah. children and, like, teenagers that, while they're not necessarily in, like, sexually explicit things, they're already, you know, just, it's open nudity. Yeah, and so, like, be cautious before you go into this movie. Also, this movie is just definitely not for everyone. So, um... Yeah, I guess we'll get into the actual <laughs> and potatoes of this movie. So, I guess how it's structured, whatever structure there is, is it's mainly into three giant chunks. You have like the intro section, the middle part where it goes through all the people and the planets and shit who mm-hmm. run the world, and then like the trek up the holy mountain. Uh,. I, I just want to, like, then the first part, because that's, like, there's hardly any dialogue. It's yeah. probably where some of the more striking imagery is. It's like a assault on the senses. I, I just want to know, like, as, as this movie was, like, revving up, what what was going through y'all's head other than Justin being, like, what the fuck I hate this just like smoke I the, like smoke was filling the room from Jim's like little brain fire uh, yeah no from like the first five minutes the phrase that kept repeating in my head was pretentious rat fuckery <laughs> uh, I I knew what I was getting into but <clears throat> it just kept becoming more of what I knew that I was getting into <laughs> <laughs> you were just like wait Oh, oh, he, 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 they they were not wrong when they said that it was... Like, there was this, like, weird, like, strange transition. Like, there's this group of people outside, and then there's this woman walks up to see what's happening. And then this guy in a gas mask, I'm assuming he's like a guard or whatever, just grabs the woman and then it's just, like just gingerly, like, puts her against the wall. She's like... I guess okay with it, I suppose. Yeah, and yeah. he's just having his way with her in front of God and everybody. And this is like very early on in the film, yeah, this too. This is like the first five, like first ten minutes. And now I was just like, all right, it's art. Let's go, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and and then it just kept going. It just like, like I said, like, like, the, like sets and like, some of the shots were fantastic. Some of the things they decided to do with those shots, however, <laughs> you know, is just, I'm like, you know what? That was a choice. Was <laughs> those are, those a choice. are several choices. And it's like uh, going back to the documentary. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, this guy wanted to do Dune without actually finishing the book. Correct. <clears throat> like, is that, is I, that I true? Believe so. I, I don't know. I think he read it. Bef- like eventually but he was just like I want to do Dune and they were like okay have you read the book no <laughs> like he just caught the vibe super hard and just like let me do it man let me do it it's like I'm ready to go this is like almost in the same vein it was like you know what I read like 10 pages of the bible now I'm just gonna make the rest of it up <laughs> I mean <laughs> essentially and gigs. essentially yeah like I saw a spider-man cover once I think I'm good to go <laughs> I'll, I'll do, I think that'd be pretty fun like someone just someone who has no fucking concept of spider-man <laughs> makes a spider-man movie just looking off like an old old light silver age cover that would be fun <coughs> oh man nobody got my <laughs> spider-man bit while we we're watching the movie though uh, I, did, I, didn't wait, I, did, I didn't hear it all right there's a moment in the film where uh he uh, goes is a long ass shot where he's going scaling up this wall uh, you oh, know the tower right as he's leading up to the rainbow hole <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh, you were like, oh, it's Spider Man. It's, like, <laughs> it's like, see, I thought we were gonna make a reference to, to like the whole Adam West and Batman, where they were like. I mean, climbing up the side of the wall, but his Robin is the quadruple amputee man, or or man with a birth defect where he has no limbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I. It's like. It, it, it's all coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, cannons, just like trauma. In my like, brain. are we friends? Are you a demon? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just like what. Uh, yeah, a lot of this section was very much like, you know, easily like the guy is painted as a Christ allegory. Yeah, obviously. I mean, we were actually making uh, crucifix from his naked body. God, what? Oh, oh, oh yeah, where they they literally uh, just copy paste as, and, and, and you notice it was a Roman guards that were doing it. So like the Roman Catholic Church mass producing Christianity, it calls the toad war that we saw beforehand. <laughs> yeah, mean, because, you know, like, I mean, like, there's, like, some st- stuff he's trying to say. And, I mean, it's not, like, hidden in any regard. Like, you know, like, no. the church and, the, and their greed, they sort of mass-produced, you know, the, the image of Christ to make money and they're making themselves fat and happy. It's sort of, like, belittling, you know, the Christ sacrifice, whether you believe it or not. It's just, like, making, you know, like, basically just... It's like they're re-killing him over and over again to let like them make this image. Yeah, and then he, when he sees it, he, he freaks out. And that kind of, is kind of what starts him on his journey to try to seek enlightenment, I guess. And like, there, there's a moment where he literally reenacts, like, you know, the money changing in the temple Bible story where he chases uh, out the oh yeah the fat cats. God, I mean, I, I'm glad you said what you said about the Beatles bankrolling this shit because it all makes sense now. <laughs> that, that was the one shot with all like the, I guess, uh, replicas of him in that room. Mm-hmm. That's when I was just like, damn, they did have some money to throw at this, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. I feel like the Holy Mountain is probably the closest we'll ever get to knowing what his doing would have been like because if he if he just had just near unlimited fun and just like carte blanche to do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah, like I wa- I kind of want to live in the ver- universe where he got to make Dune, but also that shit was going to be 14 hours and yeah. I'm like, uh-uh. I'm no, not 20 hour Dune. dealing with that. Mm-mm. <laughs> he was like, 90 minutes? Fuck you! I want it to be 20 hours! <laughs> I want it to be a literal day. Like, 20 consecutive hours, none of this miniseries bullshit. <laughs> he, he's just like, honestly, I think that's reasonable. I was originally going to go for a week straight. <laughs> they talked me down to 20 hours. They talked me down to 20 hours. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, there's a little toad battle, which... Is representing the conquest of the Americas. Yeah, because, you know, the Spanish conditions, they're kind of like the Nazis before the Nazis. Yeah, and I didn't re- realize that one of the guys was in a Nazi uniform who was, like, showing this. Because he, he was the ringleader. And it was like, like a you fucking know. top hat with a swastika on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, wow, we're... We're going there. Okay. Like the mad hat. I mean, I, I, get, was I, I, get where, I get what you're going for, but... Hell, uh, just uh, whatever. Uh, and, and I think, like, you know, seeing it, like, as funny as it is, just seeing these toads just flopping around, you know, you have the Nazi guy who was, they were infamous for propaganda. Like, having the toads is, like, sort of downplaying what actually happened until, like, the blood starts running down the fake pyramids and shit. See, I, I sound like a crazy person. No, this ain't, this all happened. Like yeah, we, yeah. we all watched the same thing. There's like this literal like toads and like uh horny and horny toads like dressed up like like little Mayan warriors and little Spanish conquistadors and, and monks and are just like heaped onto this diorama. <laughs> like one yeah. of them couldn't even hop because his poor little robe was too long for him, man. So like, bad. I specifically asked for a toad small. This is a toad medium. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, like, it's, like, especially that first part is just, like, sort of a salt of images. And for some reason, my mind just kind of fabricated that it felt more, like, linear than it did. And then I was like, oh, no, this movie's all over the fucking place. I mean, you can definitely tease out a narrative, like, you know, that the the Jesus 
like thief figures being exploited by this one religious group. And it's like, I don't like any of this. I'm going to go to this other, you know, sage figure and see if I can't do better for myself. And like yeah. that kind of skip starts this whole other wild, like rambling journey. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of this movie is a, a reaction to the hippie movement because a lot of like what, like especially the alchemist says is very like new agey, you know, trying to, you know, they're going to reject the family values of the fifties and create the counterculture, but then the counterculture gets co-opted and then they, the company start making weapons for Christians, Jews, and Buddhists. (laughs) Well, there's literally a fucking Buddhist statue with a fucking revolver poking through it and a menorah gun and a crucifix pistol. God, I, I, that, that's one of the strongest things I remember from the movie is just that image of like we got all types of weapons for Jews <laughs> Buddhists and oh Christians God. and it's literally just like a fucking crucifix on top of the barrel I, 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 I do appreciate how he is like blunt with some of his messages some of it is yeah. more like obtuse I, mean, I feel like you sometimes you can't if there's something you want to say what, whether whether you feel like uh, he did it, he went about the right way. I do feel like there's sometimes there, there's a, you know, you can't afford to be subtle with what you're yeah. trying to say. You just have to kind of be blunt with it. And, and especially a lot of the stuff in the movie that is very blunt is a lot of the stuff that it is the more political messaging of the show, which I, or show the movie that, and I, that's what I think needs to be blunt. That way, you're not missing unintentionally misinterpreted. Because, like, one of the stronger points of the film, I thought, was during one of the planetary segments where it has, like, the Mars vignette, where it has, like, oh, uh, this is the the war manufacturing, and then how, like you said, the sort of revolutionary resistance, counter, like, counterculture is co-opted, and how, like, even that, even people who are doing, like, part of resistance movements and, like, protest movements, in, in a lot of ways, they're still just bodies yeah, to be exploited in certain regard, you know, you, you you need bodies to win wars, whether it's like whether in a protest, whether in your like this evil army, and like people are people one way or the other are going to be used up for like other people's you know goals, and whether or not you sort of wrap yourself in a in a different clause, you know, at the end of the day, people get hurt and exploited because of it. Yeah, like uh, the whole like we're creating a drug that creates delusions of grandeur. Like, and, like, people are running on their bayonets. And, and I guess I must have had a sick sense of humor because I thought, like, especially this chunk of the movie, which was the planetary segments, I thought some of that shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got some good chuckles, especially the fucking menorah gun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing is, like, th- this guy, he got his start in, like, theater in France with, like, the surrealist there. So there's this clear image, like lineage, uh, it, you know, it, however you want, like how you don't have to like what he's doing, but at the same time, you know what, you know, he's going in with every single shot, having some sort of, I like, I'm going to do this. This is going to communicate this to the audience. No, I feel like he's purposeful in what he's doing, mm-hmm. whether or not anyone else realizes what he's doing or saying is an entirely different story. But I feel like he had a plan in his head and then he put it to film and by God, he did that. Uh, yeah, he did. It's, and- it's like the very opening shot is, uh, um, a person like folding up, I get what appears to be like a handkerchief or something like that. Just like yeah. constantly just fiddling around with it. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I was like, you know, knowing what I know about this guy, there is reasoning behind every little fold, crease, and crevice in that napkin right now. <laughs> and, 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 like, it wasn't until this time I saw, like, all the references to the tarot, too, which he even restored, like, an old, like, traditional tarot deck. Yeah, because I remember, like, seeing some of the tarot, like, I don't recognize the imagery on some of those. I mean, there, there might be, like, an other, like, like esoteric version mm-hmm. of it. Because the tarot is a very old thing anyway so there's gonna be a lot of different interpretations of it. I was like there's a dude coming out of an egg there's a like a flaming lips speaking like laser beams and then like a Kabbalah 
like in a man and woman human centipede on a table. I was like, I must have missed that one. <laughs> I also think that this documentary made it known that this guy also really loves his drugs, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> like he's his philosophy on it is if psychedelics, if drugs will help you to self improvement or enlightenment, go for it, but don't rely on them. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think like even like especially in this movie with the one I think it was actually like in the later in the movie when they're at the little town before the holy mountain yeah that to like distract them and the one guy is like oh all you need is LSD and this will <laughs> and, and mescaline yeah and just like Jesus Christ so like he, he has like his little like commentary and like you know drugs aren't the end all be all yeah but they're not like inherently bad yeah because <laughs> like how the story go in the documentary like he he like I, the guy was willing to do it i will say he's like oh yeah fuck it so he he did it and then he was literally just like him and the director were staring at each other for like a few minutes and then all of a sudden the director goes Okay, now. And then apparently the director somehow triggered the effects of the drug that he just took. And now he's seeing shit everywhere. Because, like, the, the, one of the guys that Yodorowsky was trying to court for the Doom movie, um, kind of like, yeah, let, let's talk and let's hash it out. Emphasis on the hash. He gave him, like, a blunt. It's like, this is some wacky shit. And uh, he smoked it. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a little goose. And then, like, like, almost on command, he, like, activated this super hallucinogenic moment for him and then he, when he came back to uh, to himself it's like you know what sure <laughs> <laughs> let's make this movie together and, and, and that, that's yeah. another strange thing about the Yodorowsky Dune documentary it's like how all these like random disparate people he managed to find or run into by happenstance or other means uh Almost all of them are just like, sure, I'll be in. Yeah. And the thing is with that, uh, that his version of Dune is quoted as like the uh, uh, the most influential movie that was never made. Because like Hodorowsky, he saved everything. They, and they did an extensive pre-production. Like, you know, like those coffee table books that have like big pictures and shit. He has one of those that's like that big. The, the coffee table oh, book is the coffee it's table. It's fucking huge. It's like the entire production <laughs> Bible. And like there's all these different scenes that were going to be in the movie that because all these other people were well-known figures in movie making beforehand. Mm -hmm. They sort of went on to make other movies and it's like, well, this is an idea I had. I can't use it for this. So let's recycle it for my other, like. The whole scene where the Ark and the Ark of the Covenant, right of the Lost Ark, where the beam of light goes into the sky and then like the mist goes out through the uh, soldiers, that was a, a screen uh, in Dune. Uh, much of the Flash Gordon movie, a lot of the aesthetic comes from that. Star Wars, uh, Alien, well, even Masters fucking, of the Universe. Fucking Dan, o, uh, Dan O'Bannon and H.R. Geiger were on the pre production for it. So yeah. like, and then then they went to do Alien like immediately after, and like Orson Welles and Salvador Dali were going to be in it. I mean, it it, it would have been a ludicrous film. I'd like to see Orson Welles in anything like that, like Dune. Well, one of my favorite bits about that documentary is like what Yodorowsky did to entice Orson Welles to be in the bitch because Orson Welles like. Yeah, I don't. It's like I don't know. I'm I'm past acting. I'm sort of move on to bigger things. I'm just want to do my own stuff. And it's like, what if I got you the chef from your favorite Italian restaurant <laughs> to cook for you personally on the set every day? And he was like, I'm in. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I'm in. Okay, late stage Orson Welles. I could absolutely see that being the thing that drew him in because yeah. he's literally just like eating and drinking wine. Yeah. And drunk all day doing commercials. Yeah. <laughs> As a, and, and playing a uh, Unicron. Yeah. Unicron. <laughs> God, oh, yeah. that just blows my mind. The man who made Citizen Kane's last role was fucking Unicron. In and the I, don't, I, don't, movie. I don't feel like he really knew what the hell it was. It's like, yes, I'm a planner or something. <laughs> but I mean, he did a good job, but, but we're getting distracted. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I feel like it's very cromulent to what we're doing, how it's like, how the movie itself was like esoteric and meandering. Yeah. So why shouldn't our conversation about it? You be know. That? Yes, I agree. <laughs> well, 
Well, but, generally speaking, our conversations are meandering, but the movies we watch are pretty straightforward. So, <laughs> makes sense that this would be flipped. The roles are reversed. How, oh, how the turntables. Flippity bippity. Oh, how the tables have <laughs> shitted themselves. Oh. Now, Jim, I have a question for you. Okay. Now I know this this uh, version, oh, uh, this interpretation shot. of. Hang on! Oh God! <laughs> the my, mic the mic just fell again. off the oh. table. Oh, well, God, we yeah. have a bit of an issue right here. Okay. Stand by, everybody. No, that's Beep. fine. Con- continue your question, Beep. Patrick. But yes, um, well, even though this isn't your interpretation of what what an art film would be, uh, my question is, what would you consider, or what do you th- feel is like would qualify? as a high art film, something that is more like abstract from your personal taste. Because if it's not Holy Mountain, but what would you see as high art or like something that's a bit more uh, loosey-goosey and it's like like filmmaking and like themes? Okay, so I've been pretty quiet so far. Yes. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. I try really hard for as much shit as I get for it, I try really hard to be uh, accepting of things, to, <laughs> to always qualify my statements like, oh, I didn't like this too much, it wasn't for me, but perhaps you'll enjoy it. You know, I do that with comics, I do that with movies, unless there's something that personally offends my entire sensibility. Now, I know you love Man of Steel, there's a lot about the Superman mythos that means a lot to me that I felt Zack Snyder shat on. There's a lot about Man of Steel that I do enjoy. Like, I had no problem with him killing Zod. That happened several times, and he was suitably upset about it. I had a problem with Pa Kent telling him he should have let his friends die because he didn't want the government on his farm. That I hated. Oh, I, I, I never said I agree with everything about that movie. Yeah. I just love it. <laughs> it's just like, for, for canon, it's more good than bad. So it's just there's a lot of it that I don't and Zack Snyder's sensibilities as a director, especially I don't I don't like. I'll defend Watchmen, but just just barely, right? Just barely. <laughs> um, yeah. So I try, and like you you guys know that from my reviews on the show for the past the nine months, like yeah. I'm usually higher than everybody else because mm-hmm. I I allow a lot more, you know. <sighs> But this this particular thing, and this here's the I don't I spent twenty years getting preached to in church and in school and by nineties pop culture. Every commercial was a PSA: don't do drugs. You know, um, so I know what it feels like to be preached at. And this movie, the entirety of the film, such as it is, is just one pretentious cockwomble <laughs> preaching at me badly. <laughs> like, oh, the Catholic Church is bad. I haven't heard that one before. Oh, wait. I've heard it for 9,000 years at this point, right? Since, <laughs> since its inception, there have been, like, compla- like, fucking Martin Luther, for God's <sighs> Sorry. 95 treaties, I say that's not enough. So it's not that I don't like artsy type things. This particular film, as I said, I felt like I was getting preached to badly by someone who had already disappeared up his own ass trying to sniff his own farts. <laughs> like, just from this film, I can tell this is a bad human being who has no business telling anyone else what to do with any aspect of their life. I found that personally offensive. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm looking. You, how fucking dare you? <laughs> oh no, the Nazis were bad. What? The Catholic Church is is, is fucking around with Christian. Oh no, really? <laughs> it's just, and I, I just fucking hate it. I hate it so goddamn much. <sighs> because, like, if you're gonna do a goddamn morality play, if you're gonna try and preach it people if you're going to try to tell people how to live their lives you're trying to like he thinks he's so far above everyone else yet he refuses to dumb down whatever his message might be so that more people 
can hear it. He's preaching badly in addition to being in no position to do any preaching whatsoever. <laughs> I just... Like, if you're going to say something of worth and you feel it's that important, you should say it in a way that people can understand that doesn't feel like you're talking down to them. But Shimmy, you don't understand. People are too stupid. They must be insulted. <laughs> That's why every every single thing when you have a learned statement, you must grind it into their face and make them feel bad for not knowing. That, that's that's just common sense, Jimmy. Now I have to grind my grind your nose in your ignorance. <laughs> so I just like there's nothing up like oh the character's name is Mars and they like war. Like really? Oh my god, that's brilliant! Thank you. Go fuck yourself. It's just it's it's like I said so so painfully, irritatingly obvious while he's. Desperately trying to be obtuse and edgy. He feels like he would be in the back of the high school class in his leather pants, smoking a cigarette while the teacher's trying to teach. Like, yeah, bro, you just got to get on my level. Like, he feels like he would say that everyone else should get on his level unironically. <laughs> and I just... Everything he does, he's doing it for his own self-gratification, and he's doing it badly. And just the idea that all of those resources could have been put towards anything else, and they weren't. <laughs> In addition to the fact that he has a fucking dog fight and he's blowing up frogs, <laughs> there are dead animals all over the place. Fuck this guy. It's a bad time to mention that the money they were burning was actually real money. <laughs> God <laughs> fucking. I don't know that to be true. <laughs> I would not yep. be surprised. That's the problem. <laughs> like, if you told me that it was real money, I'm like, yes, of course it was. That's why this whole movie, at no point did I feel like, oh, this movie's insane as I'm watching it. I'm just watching it being angrier and angrier. Like, of course. That's something he. Why, why wouldn't he do that? He's just jerking off right outside of the frame of the fucking camera. Oh, I'm so smart. <laughs> what do you think that goo was? Uh, it's just oh, so much goo. <laughs> <Yep>. So much goo. <laughs> I was like, like, what it, is this goo? What 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 is this goo? And you say, you say it was banned from the Can Festival because it was controversial. I would have banned it because it was shit. It's just bad. It's you know what it's like. This whole movie felt like Lady in the Water, where M Night Shyamalan cast himself as the author that's going to change the world. That's what. The, except at least M Night Shyamalan kept that shit to like a, a a small cameo part. He didn't cast himself as the wise old guru leading everybody else, and then fucking the Monty Python ending panning out. Where guess what? We're in a fucking movie. <laughs> this movie felt like Monty Python if somebody else was doing it and trying to be serious. I, I but, just, but that, but they, but for, a certain, for some strange reason, I find that like entertaining, like well, like the fact that it is just this level of excess, like you know, like obviously everything you're saying, like I, I totally get, and plus, why like, we watched the documentary where he just literally him saying his point of view, yeah. like hell, he says it in in this movie too, but for whatever reason, like I found that to be funny, like you know, like I that's everything you're saying is like. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with. Yeah, he's he's very self-aggrandizing, but like somehow that was funny to me. I think that was funny. And I, I get that. It's, it's like it's, it's just yeah. so over the top. I th I think part of that is due to to previous life experiences between the two of us. Because you know, like I I can't watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's not funny to me. It makes me sad because I knew this. I grew up with those people. I was raised by people like that. Yeah. So I don't find it funny. It makes me sad. Yeah. And that's how I feel about this. Like, I've, I've known these sorts of assholes my whole life. Most of them are pastors. Yeah. As like, I, I'm the smartest person alive. You need to pay me $100,000 a year to tell you what's in this book that we all have a copy of. You know, and it's just, I just hate it because these are the sort of people that at best, they just do their own stupid thing and are and like they leave other people alone and they just sit there and think about how great they are and at worst they hurt other people in the process of it it's damaging to everything they touch and i hate it now to answer your question i particularly enjoyed darren aronofsky's the fountain i thought that was a fun film it's the one with hugh jackman and rachel vice 
Is that where he like Hugh Jackman? Is that the one with the meme with Hugh Jackman just like all like covered in gold light? Is like that's the oh, one. Like okay. Future <laughs> past and middle like. So art. that was Shim. I need to put art films in in meme language. Right. Sorry. In uh, GIF format only. Now again, <laughs> GIF format only. I think I think Aronofsky is very similar in that he's he's a pretentious <laughs> shithead, but I liked the aesthetic of the fountain and I liked the performance and the fact that there was something of a story. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I like his treatment for Batman Year One that never happened because it was fucking insane. Was it, was that the one where Alfred was a black woman, a black mechanic lady? <laughs> yes, that's the one. And but, Batman was in fact wearing hockey pads. <laughs> but Shimmy, what was your favorite part of the Holy Mountain? <laughs> I think probably when the credits came up and I realized it was funny. <laughs> what was your favorite part? I think I liked the end. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the end for a second. Uh, we just brought it up how it's like, oh, it's revealed that it's all just a movie. Now, I do understand the Monty Python, like, if they're yeah. trying to be serious, bit. I get that. I feel that one. I was just like... Uh, and I and I and I also feel I, I get why you enjoy it, but at the same time, I'm at that point where you went so far to try to give a certain point across in whatever way you were trying to do it, right there. Yeah, and then just to just come all the way around and go, you know what? It's all bullshit. Bye bye. Pretentious <laughs> asshole. I, 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 I will say I was surprised by like the meta reveals like <laughs> psych bitch it's a movie yeah well I will say like I, I get where you're coming from I will push back a little bit he he is a little more self aware than I think you give him credit for and I think the ending kind of explains that like he takes literally these world leaders up to the holy mountain tells them they're going it gain immortality, meaning a life or whatever. And then he's like, all right, yeah, this is all like, he's like, it's like, don't listen to me. Cause this is just a, another false idol. Like all the other things that he went, he, uh, that he showed them to show them to throughout. And, and I mean, and he is on record saying he is not a genius. I mean, I, I, I can understand <laughs> that. Like, like, yeah, he can be self-aware, but he still did all of this. Yeah. Just because somebody knows they're a pretentious asshat doesn't make them not a pretentious asshat. And if anything, that makes it worse. Well, I, like as far as like the pretension goes, I, I think it is just more like... I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. Uh, because now you saying the thing you said made me think... He just put his own movie on the level of political systems, religious systems, all that shit. Why well, he well I, don't, I don't think it's his movie in particular. It is film as a whole. It's like, it's like for, for what you, you can gain out of this, if you can, but like also realize that this is just, at the end of the day, images on screen. And that you have to live your life at some point. You know, goodbye to the Holy Mountain, real life awaits. Again, it just feels like he's preaching badly to me. And, and, I, I, just, and I, I totally get that. This movie is like the world's longest, like, panoramic painting. <laughs> <laughs> like, just... <laughs> just going all the way around for days and days on. Like I said, like I'm going to give it credit where it's due. Like the sh there are some shots that are fan fucking tastic. Yeah, I, like I colors say, popping left and right. The, the sets were great. Sets I agree. were fucking great. Like some of the the props and shit. Yeah, like the weird tubes and things. Like the sci-fi. The, the, like, the, the giant like sex vagina giant machine. Robot vagina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was I wrong? With, did that it vagina a have a little baby? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah it had yeah. a robot baby. Yeah. It had a robot baby. Okay. Confirmed. Like the, well, but what was the goo though? Tell me what the goo is, Jedorowski. <laughs> I, I think we know what the goo is. Probably created the uh, is it cake meme before the meme was even a meme. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Before we, memes yeah. were memes. I before guess. memes were memes. <laughs> yeah, when, when, like when, uh, when the Christ thief uh, figure is like when he's smashing all the, the, the facsimiles of himself. And there's one that he's like eating the face of because it's made of cake. Then he ties yeah. it to balloons and sends it off into the sky. It's like, goodbye, Jesus. 
Yeah. My Jesus. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> Cake face Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's just like, oh, <laughs> Jesus phone home. Oh, man. A lot of, like, shots of, of people getting shot and, like, birds coming out of wounds. Mm-hmm. I, I, thought, I thought that was a really cool, like, effect. That, I mean, that was well, neat. When, like, the, when that one person was shot and, like, the birds were flying For out as of weird as it fucking yeah. was, it was neat to pull a shot like that off in 73. Yeah. As well that, as they did, I guess. Well, and also that that's also, like, they're, they're shooting this. They shoot, shot this movie in Mexico. Yeah. And, and uh, Hodorowski's from Chile. And I know, like, around this time, there were, like, student protests against the government. And then the government went and, you know, things went badly. And I think because a lot of, like, that, there's that scene and then there's a scene later on with the guy who is in charge of the police force and uh, snips people's nuts. <laughs> and uh, oh, they did bad math. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that made me yeah, mad too. The guy's like, "Yeah, I just, I just cut off your balls. And now you join 999 other testicles, other people with now my thousand testicle wall." I'm like, no, no, no. If it's a thousand people, that's two thousand testicles. Absolutely. Yeah, your math yeah. is wrong. Like that's basic math. I was about to say, if you're, well, you can't be like yeah. confusing the scrotum for actual testicles at this point. You do have two thousand testicles. Your math is off, sir. <laughs> And I could see people reading that as like the he, he's correct. the captain of the police. He's supposed to be stupid. You know, I, I just totally think he fucked that up. Because <laughs> if if it had been drawn to his attention in the film, like, uh, don't you mean two thousand? Then sure, he's supposed to be dumb. I just think they fucked it up. But also, the military grooms uh, young boys like uh, pedophiles. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, like, in that scene, to get back to my point, was, you know, there were a student protest, and they were, that's when they were, like, throwing the paint on everybody as sort of, like, a more absurd representation of clashes with the police and college students. Yeah, because, like, that's definitely not something that still happens. No, what are you no, talking about? Yeah, yeah what are We you have de- definitely grown past police Every- violence and student protests. There. Everybody gets along. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> There's a person of every nation holding hands in their front yard. There are no protests in Ba Sing Se, Pat. <laughs> hands Across America actually happened. We're doing it right now. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> actually, we never let go of the hands. It's very hard to use the bathroom when all the other countries hold in your hand. <laughs> But also, you don't get scared when you go to the, uh, the bathroom at night because you have, mm-hmm. have all America with you. Right. Yeah. Uh, but how do you hold your dick if everyone is holding your hands? Uh, they hold my dick. But no, their hands are in your hands. Whose hands are holding your dick? Who watches the Watchmen? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Gamora? <laughs> Why is Gamora? <laughs> just peeing everywhere. <laughs> it's just so much piss and shit running down people. <laughs> God, but, that was the opening shot of the movie. Pee pee. Oh yeah, yeah. That guy pee-pee. was pissing himself. Yeah, that was a lot of piss. That oh, was, man. That was a lot of pee. Like the more I try to think of like all of the like the like just I guess shocking things that were in this movie, uh, the more it's hard to remember them. Like I know yeah. it's like like I mentioned earlier, it kind like, of blends together at a certain. Like point. what what was the uh, uh, the planet where he like had a bunch of like naked human art everywhere? And then went under the butthole and then decided to go bloop and put his finger up there. Yeah. That was, oh, was Jupiter? The, I think it was Jupiter, the, the guy who had the art factory. Yeah, the art factory. I, when he said factory, I was wondering how this one was going to pan out. <laughs> <in> art <laughs> factory, like fart factory. <laughs> like, I was anticipating the worst. I, 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 I swear to God, I thought this man was going to get shat on. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I mean, this I is the type of movie that, where yeah. that would happen. Oh, yeah. God. I was like, no, he's yeah. going to do it. Get it off. He's like, I want this man to be shat on, and he's going to be grateful for the experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's about that time when we take yeah. a commercial break. So, uh, yeah. Are we, are we breaking for commercials, or are we uh, wrapping it up? Uh, yeah, I mean, Jonathan, what do you want to do? I mean, honestly, like... I don't have too much more to go into it. I mean, the movie's rather dense, but, I mean, we kind of went over the major parts of it. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if you're good with it, then I'm good with it. Do we want to spin the wheel? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, going to spin the wheel next, next time. All right. <laughs> While Pat's setting that up, we can go ahead and get the, uh, get the, the stuff out of the way, the plugs. Jonathan? 
Uh, my name is Jonathan. You can follow me on Twitter at J O N I I B Y twenty four and John owns some letter uh, John owns some twelve on Letterbox. <gasps> oh, I wasn't even looking oh, this time. No! Oh, hey, I was bound to mess up at some point. <laughs> Bad, it happened. <laughs> um, Do it again. I wasn't looking. <laughs> and, and, uh, and to Justin, uh-huh. to Cannon, to Pat, no. and to our viewers at home, our lovely viewers at home, I apologize. No, you don't have to apologize. No, you got nothing to apologize for. <laughs> the shithead that made this movie has to apologize. I want. Is he dead? I'm sure he's dead. No, I don't he, think is, so. he is fucking alive. At well, like motherfucker, 92. if you were listening to this podcast by oh, no, some like no. vanity searching Twitter and some shit, you owe me an apology and two hours of my life back, <laughs> you piece of shit. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even think he knows what Twitter is. Some his assistant better go goddamn tell him. Okay, I need to say something, and I mean this with all my heart the Snyder cut felt shorter this movie felt hella long I, 15 like, minutes in I was upset like it I was kn- only 15 like minutes I knew. I knew it was two hours but every time like it I, it came up to where I thought this was it, it like it 34 came. minutes showed yeah. up and I was like <laughs> yeah it, like even as me who rather enjoys this movie it does feel long mm-hmm uh, Cannon, where can the people find you? Well, they can find me at that Cannon guy on Twitter, Instagram, and the Letterboxed. Cool. Uh, Pat, uh, you can find him at John Lost His Name Art, and you can also listen to him if you're listening to the week that's coming out on All You Can Hear, where they're doing something. I don't fucking know. I, um, excuse me, I can speak <laughs> for myself. <laughs> but yes, um, you can follow me. On Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at John Lost His Name, my art on Facebook at John Lost His Name Art. And if you're listening to it the week it comes out on Monday, July, whoa, I had a bit of a brain blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I've been, I think a little Yodorowsky got in my bloodstream. Uh, but no, on Monday, October 4th, AYC released release episode 232, where Jonathan, Ken, and myself, we did Lads Make an Exorcism movie, where we made our own homespun exorcism film and I think it was really something to uh, to admire. If you go check that out, Lin and Manuel, on Lin Manuel Miranda, I'm sorry, or are we? <laughs> I feel like he has something to apologize for too. <laughs> uh, but and, and, and including on Tuesday, October 5th, there is a new episode of The Late Takes where Tanner had a taste test of the fried chicken restaurant Slim Chickens with Cody. Colt and Wenzel, and they tried that out. I had that for dinner tonight. Yep. They're delicious. There's so, a lot of slim chickens floating around here lately. Oh, yeah. It, no, it's it's, it's, it's a new chicken finger restaurant, and uh, we, we really, uh, we're really really fond of it. Yeah, it's better than O'Charlie's. I want to try one of the sandwiches. I need to try something. I keep getting the hungry plate. But I'm always hungry. Hungry. He hungry. hungry. We hungry. Right. We hungry. Uh, I'm Captain Shimmy. You can find me at all the Captain Shimmy shit we normally do. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> this will be for our next Uncaged episode. In December, unless we change something and do one earlier. Never know with us. Th- we'll that's see. the uh, open blanket for uh, Uncaged. Because we got spots in for- November, so, yeah. you know. That, 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 <laughs> see, some- that, that's why you subscribe to us, because yeah. we're unpredictable. Right. Yeah. Pure chaos. You never know. You never fucking know what's going on. I'm actually kind of nervous. It's going to end Jonathan's again. Oh, thank oh, God. Well, if it doesn't, then... Uh- oh! Joe, it finally happened, brother! It's finally happening! Yes. <laughs> our next, yes. Our, our yes. N- next uncaged episode will be celebrity impressions. We might have to move this one up. <laughs> uh, it's a game that we came up with that we think is going to be a lot of fun and very embarrassing for all of us. Oh, it's so. going to be so good. It'll, it'll definitely good show certain people's strengths and weaknesses. Oh, for sure, for sure. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, look forward to that, and we will see you all next week uh, with Vampire's Kiss with our special guest, Ken Logan, good friend of mine. Mm. Bye, everyone. You are excrement. Shit you will turn yourself into gold. gold. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to do that, and then I was like... I golded. I, I golded. I, like, I golded. <laughs> shit in this cup. I golded. <laughs>